Joining me now for his first interview on the angle since becoming speaker and since coming out of that meeting is Speaker of the House Mike Johnson. Mr. Speaker, thank you so much for joining us. Um, the, the president actually uh, just got off the phone with me right before the show, and he said he has spoken to you about this deal and that he is against it, and he urged you to be against this deal. He was extremely, President Trump was extremely adamant about that. Um, your reaction to that, given the fact that, look, he already, he knows how to do this enforcement stuff. You don't need some new bill coming out of the, uh, the Senate to get the border enforced. Yeah, President Trump is not wrong. He and I have been talking about this um, uh, pretty frequently. I talked to him the uh, night before last about the same subject. We don't have the text of whatever the Senate has cooked up yet. And, and so we have to reserve judgment, I think, to see what comes out of it. It doesn't sound good uh, at the outset. But what I told the, the President Biden at the White House today is the same thing that I've been saying to him since I was handed the gavel to become Speaker, and that is, our border, our national border, is national security. And we have to talk about the safety and the, the, the security and the sovereignty of America before we talk about anything else. That has to be top of mind. That's what the American people demand. That's what they deserve. And that's what the House Republicans are united around. So well, that is the battle. And we've got to get yeah. it done. The, the Republican grassroots, I think, by the reaction on social media, were really encouraged by your tweets that the Lankford bill is a no-go. And, and the text of that bill, I think, is already written. It has been written for some time, and it included 5,000 minimum uh, migrants to be waived into the country um, every day, which is 1.825 million a year. And now um, you said it's not the time for comprehensive immigration reform, which is really amnesty. So that was really encouraging. But then at 6.03 p.m. Eastern time today, Mr. Speaker, The Hill posted a story with this title. Johnson gets squeezed by Biden's Senate GOP on Ukraine and the border. Your reaction to that? Yeah, I, I don't know what, what they're talking about, Laura. We haven't seen that text yet. The senators, the Republicans who are engaged in the negotiation on the other side, say that some of those claims aren't true. We, again, we have to reserve, reserve judgment because that text has not been posted yet, and we've not seen it. I mean, I'm hopeful that they'll come up with something meaningful, but what I have said from the very beginning is that we have to have H.R. 2 or the functional equivalent thereof. Why? Because it has very important provisions. We reform asylum and the broken parole process. We restore the Trump era remain in Mexico policy, which is essential, and you end catch and release. We need to rebuild the wall. There are other elements as well, but some of those are essential to stop the flow. But Mr. We Speaker, to, yeah, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Speaker, I'm sorry to in interrupt, but I, I, I've, I've been doing this immigration thing for like 30 years Not here, it. long before yeah. you came here. But they could do that tonight. Exactly. They don't need the Lankford bill to do remain in Mexico or to enforce our border. They do not have good faith on this issue. They do not want the border to be secure because if they did, they would have secured it over the last three years. So then you show up at the White House and are like trying to strong arm you to agree to something that has been written by Schumer's staff for months. Yeah, Laura, no one is strong-arming me. I told the president, I looked right across the table from him in the cabinet uh, official's room, and I said, Mr. President, you have the authority right now to end this catastrophe. It's your actions that created it. In fact, Mr. President, I told him in the meeting today, we've documented 64 instances of you taking executive actions in your agencies that created this catastrophe. Mr. President, it's on you to unwind it. We don't need new laws. You could do it right now. I've cited him, read him the legal authority on the phone on Thursday of last week that he could take. And you know what he said? in the meeting, Laura, he said, we're ready to do big things on the border. Well, hallelujah, Mr. President. President Biden, do your job. Fix the catastrophe that you've created. It's an unspeakable humanitarian catastrophe, a national security catastrophe. 302,000 people came over the border in but December alone. But they know alone. this. Right, they but do they know, know this, it, Mr. They, Speaker. So you yes. going over to the White House today, I mean, I understand you want to show comedy with the, the Democrats, and, and, and you're, uh, you're, you have a reputation of wanting to work with them, and that's, that's great. If you're working with people who actually have the same goals as you have, right. and I think right. your goals well, here, right. by, by all indication, your goals are the goals of the grassroots of the Republican Party and most, most Americans, by the way. But that is not their goal. If it were their goal, they would have enforced the border. So you're in negotiations with people who don't have your, your same uh, goals in mind. So you're just giving them the fig leaf of bipartisanship here or they're going to blame you if this goes south. Laura, we have to do everything we can do, drag them kicking and screaming over the line, but that's our job, is to forge that consensus to make it happen. I, I'm only, I only have the control of one 
chamber, one, one House of Congress, and we have the smallest majority in U.S. history, uh, quite literally, this week with yeah. people out sick. So True. we're doing everything we can. We have to use every ounce of leverage and make them do the right thing. That's what we're trying to force. No one is twisting my arm. It's quite the opposite. I'm there at the White House demanding action on behalf of the American people, and the House Republicans are going to, are going to stand on that ground. We have been consistently and will continue to do so. If Ukraine is really the positively, absolutely has to be a priority, which I'm certainly not for, but if, if, if the desperate to get money to Ukraine, again, the American people aren't for that. I think it's only 41 percent in our Fox voter analysis poll in, U, in, in Iowa say they want to give more money to, to Ukraine. But if you guys all want to do that, do a Ukraine bill standalone. Why tie that to our border? Well, Ukraine is leveraged to get border, but to your point, they may indeed be broken up. We'll see how it all develops. Again, the devil's going to be in the details on all these these uh, proposals. But what's happening in Ukraine is is not acceptable. The status quo is not acceptable. We've sent billions of dollars over there without any clear articulation of the strategy. And I've been telling the White House this as well. What is the strategy? What's the end game? How do we have accountability but why for the we give precious them any more dollars money, of taxpayers? Yeah, That's why the give them more question. money? They're, they've uh, fail, talk about failing. That's not failing upward. They're just failing. Yeah, we've been pressing the White House every day for answers to critical questions the American people are owed, and we have to know that. We have to know strategy, end game. How do we get? How does Ukraine get out of that conflict? Why aren't the critical weapons systems that have been requested and necessary to push Russia back been supplied by the White House? I mean, I met with President Zelensky when he was in town last before Christmas, and he said they haven't gotten the weapons system they asked for. So, the, in other words, the White House is not even providing the assistance that has been needed, and and yet they're asking for more billions. There's a lot. Of work yet here to be done, and I understand the frustration of the American people. We share it as well. That's the problem. And Mr. And Mr. Speaker, one final question: Given the fact that many in the House of Representatives believe Alejandro Mayorkas should be impeached for failing to do his job, do you believe whatever is agreed to in this so-called border uh, deal would in any way be implemented on the enforcement side by a man who's allowed our border to be open on the direction of the Biden team? Absolutely not. Laura, Mayorkas is responsible for this. He engineered the open border. He, he is the one that's done that. So to your point, it doesn't matter what laws we pass. If the secretary of the Department of Homeland Security is unable or unwilling to enforce them, I think he's unwilling in this case, then it, it makes no, no difference. And, and that's the point. I, I think the White House and the president himself has to take executive action. He has to do what he has, the authority under existing law, to solve this mess, to end the catastrophe that he and his agencies, including Mayorkas, have created. We're going to insist upon that. We have been every single day. We'll continue to because we owe that to the American people. Does the fact that President Trump, uh, that he stands so strongly against this deal, is that important to you? Well, I mean, again, President Trump and I have talked about this. We don't know what the deal is. We haven't seen it yet. Oh, right? we know what it We're, is. I mean, well, it's a fig leaf seen, of them. It's a promise of enforcement with, with millions of people in the next decade coming into the country across the border. That's the, that's the deal. That's a nutshell. Well, I can tell that's you, the deal. Two lines. I just, told, I just told everybody at the White House, everybody sitting around that room, that we need the elements of H.R. 2, the functional equivalent thereof. I don't care what they call it, but you have to make these changes to solve the problem. The Deputy Secretary of, of uh, the Border Patrol, U.S. Border Patrol, a 33-year veteran of the agency, told us at Eagle Pass two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago, I brought 64 House Republicans down there. He said, it's as if I'm administering an open fire hydrant. I don't need more buckets. I need to turn down the flow. That's what we have to do to save the country, to help save the country is turn down the flow a, and get all these illegals yeah. down. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, we really appreciate, appreciate your joining us, and we hope you stand firm because I think the people who 